Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a pie chart in OpenOffice Calc. So let's go ahead and open up OpenOffice. In my previous tutorial, I showed you how to download and install this software and also showed you how to create a uh, bar chart. But today we're going to create a pie chart. So inside OpenOffice Calc, let's go ahead and open up the software. And in the previous tutorial, we created some data uh, in order to create the chart. So today we're going to create another set of data and what we might do is let's just create um, let's just create a, um, a spreadsheet right so in here we're going to do cost type and in here we're going to do cost here and let's do in fact let's call this one um, service yeah service type we're going to have different types of services in our business that we consume as users, right? I'm going to click on the number one and make it uh, press control B to make it bold. And let's just say we have like inter internet, inter, uh, internet access, mobile phone. What else do we have, right? We have um, travel, some travel cost. Let's just put in travel. And then we might ha have um, internet, mobile phone, travel. Let's do um, web hosting. So we're hosting a website. That's a cost to our business. Uh, domain registration. And let's say, for example, uh, accountancy, right? So it's some accountancy costs. So you some general costs in our business, but these could be your personal costs. It could be your, like your um you, it could be your mobile phone it could be your gas bill your electric bill your council tax your mortgage or whatever it might be but we're going to represent this for a whole year you know a whole month or a whole year let's work it out for a month right and then we can say this pie chart represents our expenditure in a pie chart over a given month so let's click on column b we're going to right click and go to format cells here and in format cells we're going to set it to currency for now and we're going to type in some figures so we can say our internet access was uh, mine is about 30 pounds at the moment so it's about 30 quid and then my phone bill is believe it or not it's cheap as chips it's only 12 pound I don't, know, I don't know how i get away with that but that's what it is and travel uh, that's like for your fuel for your car or your you know if you're traveling on the train and so forth let's say we spend about 60 pound a month hosting let's say that's about uh 25 a month and then domain registration you don't really pay this on a monthly you really pay this once a year but let's just say that we pay it every january and it represents some cost based on january and then in february's data you would just leave this blank so we can just say that's 15 pounds a year and then our accountancy fee is probably the same logic you don't really pay it on a monthly but let's say you know we pay around 1200 a year so we'll make it around 100 pound a month and really we could put domain registration like one pound 50 we, and then multiply that by 12 months will give you your cost for the year all right so this represents one month's data if we select all of the data in here select all of that information go to our charts here and then inside the charts we want to select pie chart and that is breaking down all of our costs right so you can see the internet access the mobile phone travel web hosting domain registration accountancy you can see what's eating up most of your costs so the blue section is quite expensive right but that that takes quite a lot of time for an accountant to do all of the bookkeeping but can we reduce that blue sector to a smaller wedge and maybe um you know increase our um something else like we could have our revenues down here what money's coming in this is money going out really isn't it so we could have another chart with money coming in and try and increase that in some way but at least we can visually see what's taking up most of our costs in our business and how can we reduce that so accountancy you probably can't reduce it that much but things like your internet uh, access you could get a better deal with your internet provider your mobile phone bill you can probably reduce that even though mine's pretty cheap and then your travel you can probably reduce that do some walking get a bicycle rather than um you know jumping in the car all the time and maybe you can reduce your fuel bills and your travel costs that way web hosting don't ever buy a five dollar web hosting or five pound web hosting is garbage so spend some decent money on your web hosting uh it's definitely worth uh you know putting some 
of your of your money into web hosting so you've got a good decent server to, to run your project there's different pie charts here so you can have them segmented out like this you can have them um, in this sort of donut with a circle in the, you know like this cut out so you've got these different styles of charts and again you've got the data series but this is already filled in for us because we did the pre-selection before and in in here you've got like your cost and you've got the x and the y value so it's asking us what we're going to take for our x uh, the name here and, and the Y values here. We won't go into too much detail in here. We can, you know, go into some more advanced options inside of this um, this pie chart. But I want to do something quite basic today, and then maybe we'll look at some more advanced features in here. The chart elements. You can give it a title. So let's just call this monthly cost, and then that chart title will appear across the top. Here you can see monthly cost. And then you can have a subtitle underneath that if you wanted to. There are no X and Y, Z coordinates because this is a pie chart. It's not a graph or a table sort of chart. So this will probably stay as it is. And you can move the legend. So you can move it to the bottom um, so that it sits across the bottom here, which I think looks a little bit better. But it's entirely your choice. Once you're done, you can go ahead and click finish. And you can left click outside and then that will deselect the chart. You can click back on it and move it into a different location. You can grab the handles and grow it and shrink it and do all sorts of stuff. If you hold down the shift key or constraint so then it won't distort like this. This is all distorting, right? So you hold down the shift key then you can resize it uh, without it distorting. So you can have something like this which is quite useful. And then let's say if you looked at your travel costs. And you can create another chart like this. This could be month one for January. You create another spreadsheet or you create some more data down here and create another chart based on that data. And when you create your next chart, you might reduce your uh, travel cost by 30, 50%. So it's down to 30 quid. And then when you do that, all of this table, this, this chart will update and this segment will get smaller, right? And it will allocate more space to other segments inside of your content. The domain registration, let's just say they put up their bill uh, and it went to 30 pan then that segment will you know change as well so you can this this data is dynamic against this chart here as well you have to think about this data you can manipulate it and it will manipulate the chart at the same time so let's go ahead and save our work we'll click save uh, let's just click save here we'll go to my desktop let's go into here and let's just call it pie chart dash zero one and we'll save this so now we save this document um, if we go to my desktop here, we've got a folder and inside that folder we've got this file. Uh, let's just spell it correctly with 1P. So here's piechart.ods. So this is the open office format for spreadsheets and it's cross compatible with other applications. So you can right click on it, go to open with and open it with Excel. You can email it to someone else and they have Excel. Then they can open it in Excel and they can see the same chart that you're seeing in open office um, calc. You can also right click on it and open it with LibreOffice and it will work just as well because this is like a cross compatible file, right? It's compatible against LibreOffice, um, Calc, Microsoft Excel, and you can still open it in OpenOffice as well. And you can actually open up Excel spreadsheets in OpenOffice as well, and you can save them as Excel more importantly. So if we close this and if we were to open this again with um, OpenOffice, this is the chart that we've created. We can go to File, Save As, and in the drop down menu, we can actually select Microsoft Excel file here. So we can save it as an Excel file, save it. And then we have two different versions. It's going to say, are you sure you want to save it as an Excel file? We're going to say, keep uh, current file and then close this. And now we've got an Excel spreadsheet. Not that you need it because you've got the, the ODS file anyway. But if someone wanted an Excel file, you can download or you can save it as an Excel file and send it to them. And it will just be as compatible as your um, open office calc spreadsheet so that's how you go about creating a simple pie chart in open office calc hopefully you find this tutorial useful i'm going to be creating some more tutorials on open office i like this software it's it's a little bit old school it's been around for a long time and um but it still works and sometimes things that are simple and when the interface is quite easy to use and intuitive then uh, it's nice to have software that, that just does what it's supposed to do, you could say. Um, I would still recommend that you download LibreOffice 
have that running on your system as well because LibreOffice tends to be a bit more up to date um, and has more features and it's very similar to OpenOffice as well but I would say it's a, it's a little bit more advanced uh, software it's a little bit ahead of the game compared to OpenOffice it doesn't get so many updates compared to LibreOffice but they're both free so that's the most important thing OpenOffice Calc or OpenOffice itself and LibreOffice are both free um, if you check my uh, YouTube page, you can find tutorials on how to download and install both of those applications. And in fact, I'll put links in the YouTube description showing you how to install them. Okay, that's the end of this tutorial. I hope you find it useful and I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial.